the ladies came there while listening to Sundara Chola's laughter. In front came Maharani and behind her, Mandakini holding Kundeva on one side and Vanati on the other, followed by Pungazali and a nurse as a procession. Sundara Chola's laugh had made them a little happy too. Mandakini was looking up at him one moment and the next bending down to look at the ground. Her makeup was now complete. Kundeva Prathai was famous in those days as an unparalleled master of decorative arts. It is for this reason that the small kings used to send their daughters to the old era to be the friends of Ilay Apirathi. Kundeva had used all her skills in decorating the mute queen. Due to some inexplicable feeling in her heart, Andal had decorated Mandakini's hair with a knot like Nandini. After this makeup was done, all the girls knew that she looked like Nandini in reality. Theka who wandered in the forest was a healthy Matarasi, so the difference of twenty-five years from the time of death was not visible. The other ladies brought Goddess Mandakini with little pride. Each was proud for each reason. The other ladies brought Goddess Mandakini with little pride. Each was proud for each reason. The other ladies brought Goddess Mandakini with little pride. Each was proud for each reason. In the days when this story took place, it was common for Tamil Nadu emperors and petty kings to marry multiple wives. The wars seemed to be going on incessantly. The royal sons were always at the forefront of the war front. Therefore, it was customary for the royal family to marry many women to protect the clan from extinction. It was considered a great Narunguna for a Padamaki's Hiaya to support other queens without being jealous of them. In this way Malayaman's daughter was excited. Kundave was proud of being able to display her decorative skills so well. Hadn't she made what seemed like a mad bitch into a young woman of incomparable beauty? Punguzalako was happy that her aunt was seeing so much royal business going on in the palace. Thus the emperor saw the procession of women entering the room bursting with pride. His laughter stopped at that moment. Mandakani's new look left him in awe beyond measure. As if doubting whether what he was seeing before his eyes was real, he closed his eyes with his hands and then opened them. All the details that the Prime Minister was saying just before were imprinted in his mind. For some time now he has been well aware of the similarity between the figure of the woman who appeared in front of him in the middle of the night and the figure of Mandakini. At the same time he also observed some differences. A desire arose in him to explore the whole mystery of this and know the truth. His initial disgust with Mandakini remained unchanged. He said to Anuradha, Prime Minister. I called you crazy a little while ago. It seems that all the delusions and madness belong to me. From now on, it is not enough for the doctor to come and see me every day, the magician must also be sent. It is not a sin to catch and send away the magician who comes to see the younger queen of Palvur. He said in a soft voice. Anuradha felt a small pang in his heart. Let none of those magicians come near the emperor, he prayed to himself. Then he said, King Puruma. What is the magician? Why is there another mantra? There is no other powerful mantra than the name of Sri Man Narayan. Said. Kundave Prati said, Father. Did you ask me to come? Did you tell me to go to the old house? Shall we all go? She said. Sundara Chola looked at the Prime Minister without replying and said, Aniruthera. I have changed my mind. These women are all excited for some reason. They are as happy as a new daughter-in-law at home. I do not wish to separate them at this time. Let them all stay here for a few days as you said a while ago. Champion. Mathavi has great faith and respect among them. So go and fetch him yourself. Send your disciple to Nagapatanam. I will tell the little Faluvatere to arrange for the elder Faluvatere R and his younger queen to be brought at once. Said. That may be done, Emperor. But it may take a few days for everyone to arrive. The rivers are in full flow because of yesterday's rainstorm. Said the Prime Minister. There is no harm then, there is no harm in our waiting a few days longer. If we arrange to bring Kari Kalan too, we can settle all matters. If he still refuses to come, I will have to leave myself. We can talk about that later. 
you can go tomorrow and somehow bring the big brat with you. Come. When you go, take care of the people who are in trouble because of the storm. We are concentrating on our family affairs and have forgotten that important thing, said the emperor. No, sir. I have never forgotten that. Everything will be done well, you may rest in peace, said the prime minister, taking his leave. That night, Sundara Chola truly felt a sense of peace that he had not experienced for a long time. The news that the Karayar clan Mandakini was not dead had indeed lifted a heavy weight that had been sitting on his chest for a long time. He was also comforted by the news that Arulmas Hivarman was in Nagapatanam. He also had the courage to say that Sudamani Viharam was a very strong building and that there was no danger to its occupants. He is amused to think of Anuradha's mention that the younger queen of Palvur might be his daughter. This often brought a smile to the emperor's face. He was flirting with girls like Malayaman's daughter for some time. He admired Kundave's decorative skills. You turned the wild born into Indrani? But this old woman was caught for all that? Shouldn't you show your skills to little girls like Vanati? He joked that. Then he asked Pungazali for more details about Aromas Hivarman. At the end of it Pungazali said, Swami, please allow me to go back to Kadakare. I can leave tomorrow itself, can't I? I don't have to worry about my aunt anymore. She said. One of your cousins is lying down with a fever? Are you not even worried about him? Don't be in such a hurry to leave. Stay a few days and go said the emperor. Punghuali was silent. That night Sundara Chola emperor slept peacefully. Even dreams are missing. The dream scene were not bad dreams either, pleasant dreams. The palace servants who were lying in the room next to him also slept peacefully. Mandakini was the only one among them who was restless and did not sleep well. All the events that happened today had caused great agitation in her mind. Mainly her memory was swinging to the treasure dungeon and tunnel. She was restless as she thought about her failed attempt to break Ravana's arms and close the tunnel. Dunga was looking around in the dim light of the lamp. She often gazed mainly at the windows of the upper floors. Midnight passed, then the night started. It is almost time for the third jamma. Then she saw an apparition in one of the upstairs windows. Agara saw a monstrous face peering into the room that appeared to be adjacent to the window. She also knew that the face was Inna's face. She threw herself up and stood up. She stared at the window again. That face is missing there. She slowly walked up to the door of the next room and peeked out. There she found the emperor sleeping peacefully. She looked at the upstairs windows of the room and saw nothing. She came back and without making a sound touched the flower pot with her hand and shook it. Punguzali, who was sleeping in shock, woke up. She was startled by the look on the dumb queen's face. The dumb queen signaled her to follow her. Punghuali, who had immense devotion to her aunt, got up without making a sound and followed her. The dumb queen headed towards the sculpture hall. As she left, she took a sleeping lamp in her hand that was burning on the sidewalk. On reaching the sculpture hall, Fanguzali was a little worried. Is she going to break the Ravana statue again, what? So will all the people in the palace wake up to the noise? Will it be invalid that his aunt is insane? Anta should have stopped it if she tried it. She had to grab the hammer forcefully and stop it, thinking like this, Punghuali followed her aunt and entered the sculpture hall. Cow. What is this? Is the head of the Ravana sculpture moving? No, no. Ravana's head did not move. Ravana's head looked like another man's head in the middle of the Kailasa mountain above. Immediately it disappeared. Vain maze. Sleep disturbance. The shadow of the sculptures must have appeared in the light of the lamp. It is not known whether Mantakini also saw that appearance but she went near the idol of Ravana. Thankfully she didn't focus on the hammer lying beside her. She held up the lamp in the dark space between Ravana's head's hands and the Kaila Shakari they supported. It turned out that there was a hole there. Bungazali had guessed right earlier. There is a tunnel opening. 
it is so cleverly arranged that no one can suspect it. The night before, her aunt had tried to close the opening of the tunnel. Others stopped them without knowing it. While Pungujali was thinking like this, the mute queen signalled to her daughter-in-law to follow her, and with the lamp in her hand, struggled to enter the shower and started going down into it. Little by little her body disappeared, her head disappeared and the lamp she held in her hand disappeared. Only a little light was visible. Then Pungazali also bent her body and went down into the tunnel carefully so as not to hit her head. She also disappeared for a few moments. Later, the light of the lamp went out and darkness settled in the sculpture hall. In the morning when Malayaman's daughter and Kunthi and Vanatha woke up, they were startled to see the dumb queen and Punghuali where they were lying. They searched all over the palace, in the garden and in the sculpture hall, but they were not caught. How they mysteriously disappeared no one could guess. At first he was a little worried when he told the emperor. Then, those madmen are better off gone. What if they are gone? Said. However, an unknown anxiety and fear settled inside him.